Okay, today we are on the hotel room balcony, so I have to ask you to forgive me for any background noise you can hear. There's a coach downstairs waiting for some tourists to go on a trip somewhere, and no doubt there'll be traffic and other outdoor noises. Anyway, today we're going to have a look at some Easter baked goods from Spain. So we're walking around the supermarkets in Spain, and we noticed that there's some specifically Easter-themed baked goods. So we've picked up a couple of samples of those. There were other varieties as well, which we didn't obviously didn't get one of everything. So we're just going to have a look at these today and see what they're all about. So the first one, well, this looks like it's probably going to be the most fun, so we'll leave that till last. The first one is these Pestinos Choco Mixto. So these Pestinos, there were like four different varieties of these, maybe plain, glazed, with little sprinkles on, and these are the chocolate coated ones. And I'm not going to read through all of those ingredients, especially not in Spanish because my pronunciation is not brilliant, but they look like they are kind of puff pastry type of twists, in this case with the chocolate coating. But they did have glazed, they did have them glazed as I say, and with sprinkles and nuts and all kinds of things on them. So let's open these up, if we can. And give them a try. So, oh, it's the, I don't know if it's just the weather, but the chocolate is quite melty. So they are, yep, you can see this pastry underneath there. Let's have a little bite of that. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So it's a very, very rich pastry. Very rich and short, although it's some sort of puff pastry, but really, really fatty and short. I think it might even have. I'm gonna have a look in there. It tastes a bit like it might have lard in it. Tiny bit of spice, I can taste cinnamon, I think, and possibly nutmeg, and then the chocolate coating on top. Really, really incredibly rich. I'm gonna try one of the white chocolate ones. I think they are just the same with white chocolate on, but let's give it a taste anyway. Mm. Really incredibly rich flavour. I think I need like a cup of espresso or something to wash that down to counteract all that sweetness and richness. I'm going to stop there because that's actually, they're just incredibly sweet and rich and buttery and greasy and fatty. I mean it's good stuff but my gosh they are pretty luxurious. Okay so this thing, Mona de Pascua. So Easter something. Quite light, so not really sure what's inside this chocolate. And it has a little egg there. Now this is a chocolate egg and it looks like it's a chocolate egg with a novelty in it, so we'll open that up and have a look in a minute. There were other varieties of this too, and again we had glazed ones, we had plain ones. Some with sprinkles just on top of the pastry or bread or whatever it is there. Some of them had a real hard boiled egg in there instead of the chocolate egg. So in some cases those were just a plain hard boiled eggs, sometimes they were dyed, or sometimes there were some chocolate coated eggs in there, which I'm not sure exactly what they were. I guess we should have picked one of those up, but maybe next time. Anyway, so this was one euro 99. Let's open this up and have a look. Just going to rip through that packaging. So we'll check out that egg in a minute, but this is a Valc uh, Valcor or Valcor. Happy surprise. Hmm. It's going to be a fake Kinder Egg or a Kinder Egg wannabe. We'll have a look at that in a moment. So let's have a look at this Mona de Pasqua. So it's very light. It's very soft. Look at that. Really fluffy interior. Just like really fluffy, very light white bread. Let's taste it. Mm. 
Mm. So it is just a very light, almost like brioche type of bread covered in chocolate. Quite a contrast to this thing. So of the two, well, I think we better open up the egg before we make the judgment, aren't we? Let's have a look inside this egg. So it didn't have to break that to get it open. It's just one, one type of chocolate, quite thin. I can actually see light through that chocolate shell. Let's give the chocolate a taste and see if we're dealing with decent chocolate, shall we? Mm. Yeah, that's not bad chocolate for a chocolate novelty egg. It does taste a bit cheap, but not bad. Okay, and inside here, well, we've got a little kit. Oh, it's a kit of many parts. Right, well, I'm going to clear the decks and we will assemble this separately. But this is what I like. Now, this is what Kinder used to do and stop doing. They started doing things that are just in two parts or just solid toys. But you, you used to, in Kinder Eggs, you used to get a proper kit of parts, and I missed that. So this could be better than a Kinder Egg. How about that, if that turned out to be true? So let's have a look at this little kit. All the parts here. Okay, so we're going to be making our little windmill. That's good. Proper assembly instructions, looks good. So let's see if we can assemble this then, so. So there we go, a little pinwheel windmill. And then little animal stickers. I won't bother sticking those on, but aren't they quite nice? So I would say a little bit more play value than the, than your typical Kinder Egg, actually. So I'm pretty pleasantly surprised by that. That's better than a Kinder Egg, I think. So of the two, I think this one makes me happier because it's a nice fluffy white bread. It had the nice little toy in there. I think that, that's probably more for kids, really, than adults. This was incredibly indulgent. I think probably one of these with a cup of strong coffee would be a really nice afternoon treat. So there we go. That is a selection of Easter pastries in southern Spain. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.